Hello and welcome to another episode of Mr. Boskin Does Some Math. Today we're doing illustrative math, grade 8, unit 1, lesson 11. Okay, our first problem here says if two problems have, if two rectangles have the same perimeter, do they have to be congruent? Explain how you know. No, they do not. We could have a rectangle that is 2 by 8. That would have a perimeter of 2 and 8 is 10, 2 and 8 is another 10, 20. If we had a different rectangle, because the square is a type of rectangle that were 5 by 5, that would also have a perimeter of 20. They are not congruent. Draw two rectangles that have the same area, but are not congruent. So if we had a rectangle that was, let's use the same one as last time, that is 2 by 8, that would have an area of 2 times 8, which is 16. Now, 16, we could also get by a square that is four units on a side. So a rectangle that's four units by four units would also have an area of 16. So same area, not congruent. For each pair of shapes, Decide whether or not the two shapes are congruent. Explain your reasoning. Are these two figures congruent? Well, let me try the tracing paper method. And if I trace this figure... Okay. Yes, I would say those two figures are congruent. Same shape and size. If I trace it on tracing paper and move it over this figure, it's the same shape and size, which means it's congruent. Now, now, next one, one I could do the same thing. Trace it. it. This, this one is trickier, trickier for me to try and do digitally, digitally but this, this looks like it is a reflection. reflection. So, so if, if I were to take this figure and reflect it over this line, line it would put it right here, here and, then and then I would just have to translate it down. down. So, so yes, those, those two, two figures, figures are congruent to each other. Question four, reflect, reflect quadrilateral A over the x-axis. X Label the image quadrilateral B. B. So, so first, we're going to reflect this over the x-axis. This is the x-axis, which means we want to go the same distance, perpendicular, so that point would be there, this point would be here, this point would be here, and this point would be here. You can do this better using a ruler than I can digitally on here. Or it would be even better if this were a coordinate grid so that we would have actual points to use. So this is now quadrilateral B. Reflect quadrilateral B over the y-axis. So reflect B over the y-axis, which would mean this point would go here, this point would go about there, that one goes 
And then this one goes here. So we reflected A over the x-axis, got B, reflected B over the y-axis, got C. Our quadrilaterals A and C congruent. Is A congruent to C? Yes. Why? Explain how you know. Because there was a sequence of rigid transformations taking A to C. Okay, what question is next? The point negative 2, 3 is rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise using the center of the origin, 0, 0. What are the coordinates of the image? So, as we know from last time, 90 degree rotation means these are going to swap places and there's going to be some changes in the signs. So 2, 3 is going to have to become 3, 2. All of those are 3, 2. Now let's think about what's going to happen to our sign. For at the point negative 2, negative 3, that's down here. If we rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise, that's this direction. So 90 degrees counterclockwise is going to put us over here. Now, if we think about this point, the x value is going to be positive and the y value is going to be negative if we are in this quadrant. Positive x, negative y, it has to be c. Okay, next question. Describe a rigid transformation that takes polygon A to polygon B. So we want to take this figure here into this figure here. So... I believe, I believe there, there are multiple ways we could do this. this. The, the first thing we could do is we could rotate 180 degrees around the origin. The other thing we could do is we could reflect this figure over the y-axis and then the x-axis or over the x-axis and then the y-axis like we did a couple problems ago. That doesn't really look like an F. Reflect over x then y. So, by doing two reflections, we could take figure A and put it onto figure B. So there are two different options for this. You could have had either. They're both acceptable. That looks like that was our last problem. This has been another episode of Mr. Boskin Does Some Math. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.